This is from Epic Times, and it's a sh uh, short little uh, video, and it's about how the specter of communism is ruling our world. I will leave the full link in the description, and I'd also um, like to show a couple comments. So this will be in the description, the link. And there's two comments here that I'd like to show, and you can read them. This one is the first one. And the second one. And also, I have uh, played the video clip, and if you'd like to see more, you can also download Epic Times app and get a lot more interesting topics. for the deaths of at least 100 million people. The Black Book of Communism details this history of murder. From documents declassified by the governments of nations in the former Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, as well as official records on the victims of communist political campaigns in China and North Korea, the public has gained a good picture of the Communist Party's addiction to killing. Communist totalitarianism is often compared to that of the Nazis. While there are many parallels to be found, there is one crucial distinction that is often overlooked. The Nazis aimed to eliminate the Jewish people, but the goal of communism goes beyond physical slaughter. People of faith do not consider physical demise to be one's true death, since the soul goes to heaven or is born again in the cycle of reincarnation. The Communist Party uses killing as an instrument to plant the seeds of terror in the minds of the people, forcing them to accept its evil ideology. Through the destruction of morality, people's souls are fated to damnation. The Communist Party aims to destroy not just man's physical body, but also his soul. An additional characteristic of the Communist Party is the intensity with which it carries out internal purges and selects the cruelest of leaders. It is difficult for many to understand the rationale behind the barbarity inflicted by the Communist Party upon its own ranks, including those who became victims simply for deviating from the party on specific issues while otherwise being wholly loyal to the party and its leadership. One reason is that the Communist Party, in its rebellion against gods and humankind, possesses an instinctual fear that its doom is always around the corner. To reinforce itself, the party needs to recruit individuals with no regard for moral right and wrong. These individuals are distinguished in the process of mass killing, and their elevation to positions of leadership enables the specter of communism to ensure the perpetuation of its earthly tyranny. In 1989, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, cadres who refused to participate in the June 4th Tiananmen Square massacre were purged. Jiang Zemin, who demonstrated his cruelty during the events, was promoted to become leader of the CCP. After Jiang began the persecution of Falun Gong in 1999, he promoted officials such as Luo Gan and Zhou Yongkang to high positions as they had demonstrated their ability to commit the most brutal crimes in the persecution. Another motive for killing is to recruit participants from general society, as was done during the Cultural Revolution. By committing murder and other crimes, the masses implicated themselves as accomplices to the CCP's savagery, and the most brutal perpetrators became the staunchest followers of the party. Even today, many former Red Guards who committed assault and murder during the Cultural Revolution 
express no remorse for their crimes, saying they have no regrets about the events of their youth. Furthermore, by killing its victims openly and deliberately, the Communist Party intimidates the general population into obedience. All this allows us to expound on a general principle. Throughout history, killing has occurred under tyrannical governments or during times of war because there was an enemy to be defeated. It is the characteristic of the Communist Party that it must have an enemy, and if there are no enemies, it must invent them so that it can continue to kill. In a country like China, with its long history and rich culture, the Communist Party could not achieve its aims without continuous killing. Traditionally, the Chinese people believed in and revered the divine. Steeped in a cultural heritage of 5,000 years, the Chinese people would not otherwise tolerate the existence of the barbaric and blasphemous Communist Party. The CCP's sole means of maintaining its rule, as learned from the Soviet trial run, is the use of mass murder.